Snow. It's one of the best things about a Maine winter, and it's finally arrived. Predictions for the storm that passed through last night began at 18 to 36 inches. Like so many forecasts, it changed drastically before the storm hit. And by the time the first flakes fell, the predictions had changed to 12 to 16 inches. I'm guessing we ended up with 10 inches altogether. Still, that's the first significant snowfall we've had, and I couldn't be more excited. Finally, it's time to enjoy winter the way it was meant to be experienced. First, I've got to prepare the house so it's nice and warm and cozy when I get done with all my outside efforts. I've been itching to use my cross-country skis, and it didn't help that I jumped the gun a few weeks ago and tried when there wasn't enough snow at the farm. Finally, I have enough. Our woodlot is incredibly rocky, and I like to make sure there's plenty before venturing out on skis so I don't damage them on the ledge and rocks sticking up through the soil. First, however, I need to groom the trail. I don't own a snowmobile, nor do I want one. I don't have a groomer. What I have is a pair of snowshoes and a need to get some exercise. Let's break some trail. I learned this trick accidentally while I was on a backcountry trip with some people a few years back. We were in Baxter State Park and had skied into one of the huts that's open in the winter. You need reservations which can only be made in person with the rangers at the gate on a specific day at the end of October. Our ski in took all day, but the second day of our trip we had time to explore and we decided to hike up one of the mountains that's near the cabin. There were 13 guys and we were all on snowshoes in three feet of snow. We took turns in front because the front person has to break trail and it's very hard work. When we crested the tree line, we were only up there for about two minutes because the wind chill and cold were so intense that it was dangerous. You can get frostbite in less than five minutes at the temperatures we were experiencing. So we headed back down to the cabin. Some of the other guys were veterans to this trip, though that year was my first with this group. After lunch, several of the guys decided to go glade sledding, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's like glade skiing, but on a sled. It sounded fun, but I wasn't sure how on earth we were going to sled in three feet of fresh snow in the thick Maine woods. We all had pulks, on which we dragged in our gear. Everyone unhooked their harnesses and we dragged our sleds up the hill. What the other guys knew that I didn't, but soon learned, is that 13 guys on snowshoes, all stepping in the same place, make an excellent track for a sled. It was an incredibly fun afternoon, and I'll remember it as long as I live sledding down a track we'd made in the snow with winter sun filtering through northern Maine's beautiful forests in one of the best state parks in the country. I resolved to set up something similar at my house, and I also realized I could use the same technique to create a groomed ski trail on my woodlot. So each year, when we get enough snow, that's exactly what I do. Hey, hey, we're not going over there. We're going home. Not a boy.
creation of my ski trail, this gives me a ready-made excuse, not that I really needed one, to take Ziggy out in the woods, therefore enjoying two of my favorite things, the woods and Ziggy. But don't tell him that. I could tell by the speed at which Ziggy entered the house and ran upstairs that he'd had enough. That deep snow is challenging for him. He doesn't have snowshoes, after all. I was counting on that tiring him out factor to give me a good reason to go inside, sit by the fire for a minute, and enjoy a cup of coffee before heading out again to tackle some other projects that need doing after a big snowstorm if we're going to enjoy the outdoors at all this winter as a family. I mentioned before that I thought glade sledding was a great idea and that I could use snowshoes at nights and weekends homestead to make a sledding track the same way I learned to do when I was in Baxter State Park with a bunch of guys who were just having fun. But I actually make two sled tracks. One is out in the woods, out past the zip line. The other uses the pile of snow we have to make when we plow the driveway. Since we have to have a massive pile of snow just outside the front door, we may as well enjoy it. This is why I spend extra time when clearing the yard to clear two tracks on the lawn. I don't care about the lawn being exposed at all. I just want all that snow to form two ridges that make it easier for kids to keep the sled on the track. These ridges act like bumpers in a bowling lane, but it also helps to create the track in the middle by using snowshoes. Lizzie and Martin are both getting pretty good at steering their sleds, but when they have friends over who aren't necessarily as accomplished at sledding, it's nice to have some bumpers to keep them on the track. Then, once the ski trail is groomed and the sled tracks have been created, it's time to break out the heavy equipment and get the snow off the ice rink. Storms like this make me very thankful to have a snowblower. I didn't have one for a few years after we bought this place and I started building the ice rink. In other words, I've shoveled this thing several times. About three years ago now, Maine had a winter like you read about in the history books. There was one week in February when we had three snowstorms in seven days, which dumped over four feet of snow on the homestead. I didn't have a snowblower then. I resolved to get one, and did, pretty quickly after that week. There's still shoveling involved, but it's nothing compared to clearing the ice rink from the center out when there are several inches of snow atop it. 